This is Prophet Blaine, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station. Hey, everybody. I wonder how long I can do that for. So, welcome. I'm Aide, and this is She's Deeply Rooted. Um, I am always excited to be here and I am always excited to do this. Um, as you know, we are in the second season. This is, um, I guess you can call it episode two, season two. Um, and last week we spoke about bondage. We, um, spoke about different things that can keep you in bondage from your purpose, from, um, your walk and, from your relationship with God and how it affects you in the long run. Um, if you guys hear like knocking in the back, in the background is cause me child is um, persistent and she's very determined to open that door. So anyways, um, okay. So I really want to talk. So I have a topic today that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'm, we're going to talk about it, okay? But first, I feel to encourage um, a group of people. And I'm going to be very transparent. I'm kind of confused on why I'm doing this because I'm going through the same situation. So probably that's why. But um, so I just want to encourage the young people that um, not just young people, but people in general that have given their life up to Christ and have made the decision to walk with God um, and to be obedient to his will. Um, I want to encourage you that if you have, this is really to sons and daughters that have parents um, that are not saved and that are not in agreement with what you do, how you do it, and why you do it. Um, I want to encourage you that even though I understand that you want your family to be saved and I understand that you want your parents to be saved, um, I completely understand that this is your heart's desire and God understands that, that, that this is your heart's desire. Um, I want to encourage you that a lot of times we have no control over what happens. We have no control on how it happens. Um, when we want our family to be saved, we have to understand that we have to leave it up to God. We have to leave it up to God to really take care of it and really do his thing. Uh, reason being is because if we try to step in and try to do things and force them to uh, have a relationship with God or make them feel like if they don't have a relationship with God that they can't be around us type of thing, um, it can cost them to, it can cause their vision to be tainted and it can cause them to feel like you're trying to force something on them that they're not ready for. Um, when I first started walking with God, I, my first thing was I wanted my family to be saved and that was, and it still is my heart's desire. Um, and in the beginning it was very tough because there's many sacrifi sacrifices that I had to make um, as an individual. There was many things that I had to leave behind in my past life, um, such as uh, cursing, lying, uh, manipulation, and you know all the things that are not of God, I had to leave that behind. But that is the only person that they knew. Um, that is the only person that they got to know. They got to know an idea that was broken, an idea that was not... Um, in the right place and that was hurt and was broken. That's all they knew. They didn't know that that's not who I was called to be. They didn't know that I am not supposed to be that way. I'm not supposed to be manipulating people. I'm not supposed to be lying. I'm not supposed to be complaining. And, you know, so they don't understand that. And you can't hold that against them. Um, and so when I started to make these changes, I could feel um, this how do I describe it? Like if someone is like, when you feel like someone's watching you all the time, like if you feel someone is breathing on your back, that's how it felt. And I felt like if I didn't want to do something, like it was a problem. Um, for example, I, 
when I first started walking with God, I was very, very sensitive and I couldn't listen to certain music and I couldn't watch certain shows and I couldn't watch certain movies. So I always set up boundaries. I was always very specific on what I could hear. Um, if they started gossiping, I would say, I, I really don't want to participate in this conversation. Um, can we talk about something else? Or I would just excuse myself and because they didn't understand the new and new, the new creature that I was in Christ, um, it would cause them to feel offended, even though that was not my intention. My intention was not to offend. My intention was not to make you feel some type of way. But when you are dealing with individuals that are um, stuck to one way and that's all they know, the new is going to make them feel some type of way. Um, it's going to come. Basically, what they're feeling is conviction. They just don't understand that. They don't know what that feels like, and they don't know why they're feeling that. So if you are a young person and you are dealing, if you are currently dealing with a situation where you want your parents to be saved, you want your family to be saved, and you just, that it, it, it hurts you when they don't understand you. It hurts you when um, you make changes and they don't agree with it, um, or you're being obedient to the will of God and they don't understand it, and they go, you know, they offend you and they go against everything that you believe in. Um, don't take it. Don't be offended by it. Don't hold a grudge against them. Don't um, allow this to penetrate you and hurt you. This is where you have to stand firm and you have to take uh, a stand on who you are and who you follow and who you are submitted under. You have to remind yourself that God is in control. And God hears your heart's desire and God knows exactly what you want. He knows it because he wants the same thing. He wants your family to be saved. He wants to have a relationship with your family because these are, her, these are his children. This is his creation. So you really have to trust God in this area and you really have to let go of um, the way you want to do things basically and how you want things to go. And I know it's not easy, and I know it's hard, and I'm going to be very transparent. This is something that I'm currently going through. And um, I'm a, I've been in this walk for, I want to say, I don't know how old am I, like 23, so like close to five years, I want to say. It might be like four or five years. So I've been in this walk for four or five years, and this is still a desire that I have. But truthfully, I'm going to encourage you by saying this. They watch you. And they watch everything you do. And they pay close attention to everything that you do. Because throughout this time, my family has highlighted certain things or they ask certain questions. And just the small things like that matter. And even if you impact their life in such a small way, it matters. But you are the living example of what it's supposed to look like to walk and serve God. You are the living example that they need in order for them to so in order for them to follow once they get saved, once they get saved, they need somebody to lean on. They need somebody to that was an example so that they can go forth and do the same. So you have to make it your goal to, you know, understand that because it's out of my control, the only thing I can do is really pray and walk the way that God has called me to because they don't understand right now. But when the time comes for them to make the decision to get saved, then they will understand in that moment all the things that God told you to do. So you have to understand that not everything is going to go your way and not everything is going to make sense but trust and believe that God has a plan so I just had to say all that um and now we're going to go ahead and get into the topic um of today um and today we're going to be talking about food hallelujah who doesn't like food so um my journey with health has been all over the place. So when I was younger, um, I don't know. I, it's kind of weird. Like, if you've been chunky your whole life, like, you don't remember a time that you were skinny or you were healthy, basically. Like, you can't remember because your whole life you've been chunky. So 
Um, I remember when I was a kid, I would go to the pediatrician's office and, you know, they would, um, tell me that I was overweight and they would tell my mom that I was obese and I needed to lose weight. Uh, and when I, when you're a kid, like that kind of stuff, like does, you know, does something to you because now you don't feel good enough. You see what I'm saying? So when you don't feel good enough, that causes you to find some comfort. And where am I going to find comfort? I'm going to find it in food because food is good and I love food. So now I'm building an unhealthy relationship with food because now this is becoming my comfort zone. The food is becoming uh, something that I seek for when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I feel abused, um, if I don't feel good enough that day, if I'm very insecure that day, then I'm going to run to food. So this was something that I dealt with growing up. I remember, so this was pretty much like my entire life. Then I turned uh, 15 and, you know, when you are in those 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, your body is, you know, becoming woman-like or man-like. And so when I was 15, my body transitioned from little girl to woman. And um, I lost a lot of weight in that process. And I was... Not skinny, but I was also unhealthy, but it was a weight that made me feel good about myself. And so because I wasn't used to being looked at, um, because I wasn't used to being attractive in a way, I guess you can say, um, I was this area was unknown to me. So when I was getting attention, uh, it caused me to basically feel myself a little too much. So... When I started feeling myself a little too much, I started to make decisions that were unhealthy, such as exercising without eating. Um, I would not eat for many, many hours. And when I did eat, I would eat fast food. So it was causing me, even though I was, an, uh, an, I was thinner, I was still unhealthy and I was still making unhealthy choices with my food. So I was still causing my body to be hungry because it was thirsty. It was... Um, so unhealthy that it was my body was craving vitamins it was craving nutritional stuff and um i was not feeding that i was feeding it hot cheetos wendy's literally i had wendy's probably every single day at that time and then i was finally introduced to like mcdonald's and because i didn't have mcdonald's so like i was older uh fast food wasn't something that i ate as a kid but um when i was in high school i was more into fast food so anyway, so 15, I had a very, still a very unhealthy relationship with food. Then, um, I went to, then from there, my weight was always up and down, up and down. It was never consistent. So then I got married and this is where I felt the most disappointed in myself. Um, this is where I noticed that I had truly screwed up. Because I got literally to my highest. And I was big. I felt big. I uh, didn't feel good as like... I couldn't walk really a, um, for long miles. I'm not long miles, for long walks. Um, even though I was in denial though. Like I really thought I was okay. Um, and it really was because I was so used to being chunky my whole life. That I was okay with being chunky. Um... But not just chunky, unhealthy chunky, because it wasn't just chunky, it was unhealthy. And so I got pregnant. When I got pregnant, I lost a bunch of weight again, y'all. But when I lost the weight, it was an unhealthy way of losing weight when I got pregnant. Because for one, um, my first trimester was fine, but the beginning of my second trimester, I was throwing up and I couldn't really eat. So I created, I got, I, um, mentally created this fear of eating um and eating certain things and eating a certain amount because i got afraid that if i ate something i would throw up so this fear consumed me majority of my pregnancy so this fear was an unhealthy fear so i didn't really eat the stuff that i needed to eat when i was pregnant so when i had her i was very very weak like i'm not joking y'all like i was weak like i could not um I was just very weak, okay? Like, my hair was falling out. Like, it was just a lot going on at that time, okay? So, it was just too much. So, then I find out I'm pregnant again, three months uh, after having Ellie, Lord Jesus. And um, this time around, I had a revelation where I was like, 
wow, like, you really are unhealthy. And even though I've tried in the past to go on different diets, like, I went vegan for a little bit, I went vegetarian for a little bit, so I was always on this, like, trying new trend things, um, the only thing I haven't tried is keto diet, and I don't think I want to try that, but, um, so I was always on a, you know, on a new trend, trying new diets, inconsistent though, because I never had consistency in my life. So why would I make a consistent decision? So anyways, so this is happening. Um, hey, Dorothy. And so again, unhealthy decisions. So then when I got pregnant with uh, Mateo, I was like, okay, I did. Like, you're still making unhealthy decisions. Because I, I ate terribly the entire pregnancy. I'm not going to lie. I had tacos, like, majority of my pregnancy. Um, I didn't really have fast food. Oh, yeah, I did. Because I had McDonald's breakfast almost every single day. Like, you know, and of course, because I was making these unhealthy decisions, it was trickling down to my husband. Because my husband ate whatever I ate. Because, you know, wives, men just eat whatever you eat. Like, whatever you make. Whatever you provide when it comes to food, they'll just smash it. They don't care. They don't think about the process. They don't think what's on their plate. They're just hungry. So, anyways, so I didn't have accountability in that area, and I didn't have someone that was disciplined in that area. So, it was the last month that I was pregnant with Mateo, and um, I would, had this fear that I was going to have, like, high blood pressure or if something, because I had preeclampsia with uh, Ellie, and so... Preeclampsia is basically when you have extremely high blood pressure and it's because the baby is inside, basically. So they have to get the baby out in order for you to calm down because it can cause seizures and it can basically lead to death, basically. So anyways, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the decision to be healthy. I don't care. Right now, I don't want to think about losing weight. I want to focus on being healthy. I want to make the decision to eat good food, healthy food, filling food, nutritional food. This is the decision I'm making right now. So when I have this baby, because right now I'm not going to be disciplined because I'm pregnant and I crave everything. So once I have this baby, I'm making the decision to eat healthy and do what I need to do to get healthy. Okay. So yesterday I had my six week appointment and um, I'm close to my pre-pregnancy weight. But because it was an unhealthy way of getting there, I'm not really trying to be pressed. I'm not trying to be too pressed about it. I'm trying to lose weight the healthy way. So I'm taking my vitamins now, y'all. I'm taking my vitamins, okay? I never used to do that. So I'm taking my vitamins and I eat um, good food, nutritional food, which I'm about to have some quinoa, chicken, and some veggies. I'm excited. That's waiting for me after I'm done with this. So... The okay, so after all this, now we're gonna you know transition into the this this message because I was sitting here in the office the other day, and I was like thinking I'm like dang what can I eat today? What's something that's healthy, but that I can get quickly and I cannot be hungry anymore. So I was on uh, DoorDash and I was looking for something to eat and I was like dang like you know they don't really have very healthy options, but um. I heard that Burger King got the Impossible Burger. So I said, okay. They have Burger King on uh, on uh, DoorDash. And Impossible Burger basically is this uh, non-meat burger. And it's supposed to taste like burger. Honestly, I already tried it before. Um, it's okay. Like, it's really not all that. Like, I don't know. To me, it wasn't all that. It has a weird texture. Um, to me, it doesn't taste like meat. But it also does not not taste like me if that makes sense i don't know it's just a weird thing that you gotta if you want to try you can try it but anyways so i'm scrolling down doordash and i'm like oh they got burger king on here that impossible burger is on there the impossible burger is healthy you know what i'm saying it's a healthy option it's vegan you know what i'm saying i should be good i should feel good after this so on and so forth so then something, you know, I, it might have been the Holy Spirit or it could have been me. I was like, dang, I wonder, like, what's really in the Impossible Burger? And I wonder why it's healthier than meat. So I decided, you know what, let me go Google the difference between the meat and the Impossible Burger and what are the health benefits and what are not the health benefits. So I go on there and I'm reading this article and I'm reading many articles because I'm doing some research. Because once I get into doing research, I you cannot stop me. I'll go for hours. So... I'm like, okay, so I'm reading these articles. I'm reading the information on the Impossible Burger. It used to be made with, um, so it's made with pea, pro pea protein, P-E-A, not P as in, you know, 
you know what I mean. So um, it has ingredients in it, such as soy, um, soy, which is really not good for you. Um, just letting you know that soy is really not good for you. Um, you can do your own research on it. I'm not going to, you know, give you an inclination to it or whatever. But soy is really not good for you. That's all I can say. Go do your research. And then, so I was like, okay. So I continued to research. And I was like, dang, like, all these articles are basically saying that it's not healthier than meat. It's a good option, but it's not healthier than meat. And it really isn't good for your body. And if you do your research, a lot of the vegan meatless things are really not good for your body because it's processed. So a lot of these things that, you know, they say, oh, you can eat this meatless bun, you know, like it's a hot dog, but it's meatless, which I think meatless word annoys me. Um, and so these options are not healthier for you. They're just basically a good option, but they're not good for you, if that makes sense. So, basically, it came down to Impossible Burger is not all that. You should just eat meat instead because it's not really a better option. So, I was like, dang, that sucks. I'm over here thinking this is a better option for me. Um, so, I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? So, anyways... I ended up eating a Five Guys burger. Don't judge me. Okay, that bad boy was bombed. I had no bun on it. That's good. It was a lettuce wrap instead of a bun. So it was still good. It was bomb. And you should try it. The lettuce wrap is bomb, okay? I just put a lot of mustard on it. No ketchup because I'm trying to do less sugar. So I was sitting there. And, of course, if you are a prophet or if you are a minister in general, you could make a message out of anything, okay? You could look at a chair and make a message. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love God because he has a message in literally everything. So I'm sitting there and I was just like, okay. So I was like, just because something looks healthy doesn't mean it's going to fill you up. Doesn't mean it's actually going to fill you up with the nutrients that you need. So I'm like, um, I'm like, okay, Lord. So then he started to minister out to me. He was like, when you choose to be healthy, it requires discipline, commitment, and knowledge. And I was like, dang. Okay, so what that mean, God? Because I'm like, all right, cool. So, for example, when I had Mateo, I didn't know well, I didn't know that I was lacking iron. But I had this, so I was informed I was lacking iron. I was supposed to be taking iron. I didn't do that, okay? I didn't take my iron pill because I was like, this is dumb. I should be fine. But because I didn't follow instructions and follow through on getting my iron pill so that I could take my iron, so when I had him, I should be fine, I didn't do that. So what happened? I had to get a blood transfusion after having him because um, my heart rate started to go up because my because I didn't have enough iron in me. And I had lost blood in, uh, during the surgery because I had, I had a C-section. So because I didn't have enough iron in me, I had consequences. I paid the consequences of not feeding my body what it needed. So I was like, dang, you right, you reminded me of that. So I wasn't disciplined and I wasn't committed and I surely did not have the, I had the knowledge, but I didn't implement discipline and I definitely did not implement commitment. So he started to show me that in order to have a healthy relationship with God, you have to be disciplined, you have to have commitment, and you must have the knowledge to have a beautiful relationship with God, a healthy relationship with God at that. Because God is trying to feed us all these nutritional things. He's trying to feed us his word. He's trying to feed us all these things that he has for us. And, and it's not just the word, but it's also the promises. All of those things are basically, let's say the promises are the vegetables, you know what I'm saying? And then the word is the, uh, uh, wait, what did I just say? The vegetables? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. So the, um, oh my gosh, I just had a full brain fart, y'all. Uh, the promises are the vegetables. The word is the fruit. And then you got, you know, I guess like healthy meat options like salmon or whatever. And those are, I don't know, little rewards, I guess you can say. So you have all these things that he wants to give you and feed you with it. And you have the knowledge, you have the understanding that he's trying to give you these things, all these things, right? But you don't have the commitment to it and you don't have the discipline. For example, um, when you make the commitment, that means that you have made, you, you know, you have adjusted yourself to make this commitment to follow through. 
And I'm going to be very honest and transparent with y'all. Please pray for me because my following through is in the middle. You know what I'm saying? It's not good, but it's also not bad. So I'm in the middle range and it's basically lukewarm, guys. That's not good. So anyways, so when you make a commitment, that means that you're going to follow through. That means you're going to go all the way. You're going to follow this routine and this is what you're going to do. So I'm going to be raw. I used to make, I said to the, to God, I'm going to make this commitment to you, God. I'm going to wake up every day at 6 in the morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my word. And then I'm going to go ahead and live my life. I have not done that since I had children, okay? I, you know, when I was pregnant, I went through a little um, season of praying. But it wasn't like, you know, like for like commitment for real, you know? It was like, oh, I kind of did it for a week. And then I was like, all right, I'm straight. Like, I think I got enough breakthrough. Um, so listen to that. I think I got enough breakthrough. <sighs> Anyways, so we need, when we make the commitment to do something with God, that means we have to follow through in every area because when we make this commitment and we follow through in every area, we have a consistent flowing relationship, a very healthy relationship with God, which causes our, our mental state to be good. It causes our energy to be good. It causes our um, our spirit to be fed. It feels good. You feel good. You feel empowered. You feel strengthened. You feel good because I find, when I listen to people that say they wake up at four o'clock in the morning and they pray, you know what I'm saying? And they read their word and they also have time to write some stuff, write a message. I'm like, dang, bro, like you, I want to be like you when I grow up. I have the knowledge that we can do it. But I'm not putting the commitment to it because I suck at committing, basically. So, in order for us to get all these things that God wants to give us, we have the knowledge again. But now we have to follow through with the commitment. Now, when you follow through with the commitment, so now you made the commitment, right? So now you need discipline. Because in order to do all these things, you must be disciplined. The reason I was unhealthy and I'm, you know, working on getting healthier. The reason I was so unhealthy was because I had no discipline. And the reason I had no discipline was because I never had consistency in my life. And it stemmed up from my family and it's been like that for generations. So because all these generations had inconsistency and in it, it trickled down to me and I'm very inconsistent, but I'm breaking those things right now because I'm trying to be consistent. I'm trying to be disciplined. I'm trying to be committed and I'm trying to use the knowledge that God has, has given me. So the inconsistency caused me to be uh, have no discipline. And because I didn't have discipline, and what does discipline look like? Discipline means I am supposed to be eating healthy. I have a salad in front of me. Let's say I have a salad in front of me, right? And there's also a cupcake right next to me. Am I going to be disciplined enough to just eat the salad and leave the cupcake there? Not touch it, not even think about it, just leave it there. Not even pick at it, because I know me, I'll probably eat some icing off of it. So you're made, that's, that's discipline right there. I'm disciplined enough to look at the salad, eat this delicious salad, take all my nutrition in, and then leave the cupcake alone and not touch it. You see what I'm saying? So are you disciplined enough to ignore going out and drinking? Are you disciplined enough to say, you know what, guys, um, I'm cool on this conversation. Y'all gossiping too much. I can't do this. Are you disciplined enough to, um, you know, follow through, follow through? Look, God. All right. So all these, you know, things that you need in order to really have a healthy relationship. And it's the same thing when you want to have a healthy lifestyle. You have to have the discipline and even, like, working out. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I haven't worked out in, like, three years, okay? So, I've made the commitment that I'm going to start working out once I got cleared from, you know, after the surgery. And I finally got cleared yesterday. So, now I have to follow through and work out. And um, a lot of times what happens is when we make these commitments, we don't know where to start. We don't know where to start. For example, you want to start reading your Bible every day. Where do I start, Lord? How do I start reading the Bible? Uh, just start. So the way to start is, you know, you got to worship. That's the first thing you got to do. 
You got to worship. You got to praise him. And then from there, you go eat your dessert, which is the word. But, you know, everybody has a different routine. Everybody's going to do things differently. Not everybody's going to do the same thing. Like, for example, if you have different personal trainer, trainers, they all do things differently. But somehow they all get to the same purpose, which is to help you lose weight and get you healthier. So everybody has the same goal in mind, basically. Everybody has the same goal. For example, I don't know if you guys have watched... Um, Revenge Body, I know the name is terrible. You shouldn't you should not be getting revenge on nobody. But anyways, Revenge Body is by Chloe Kardashian. She basically, you know, the the concept of the show is kind of bold, but I'm getting to a point here. So the pretty much the concept of the show is uh these people come in, they hurt, they broken, uh they you know been abused, some of them have been told they're too fat, you know, you can't do nothing because you're fat, basically. And so these people come in and they're like, oh, you know, and then Chloe Kardashian, I'ma keep my opinions to myself. She comes in and she's like, All right, boo, I'ma help you. I'm have this personal trainer right here, and this personal trainer gonna train you, show you how to eat, and they're gonna help you work out, and you're gonna get healthy, you're gonna get skinnier, and now you're gonna prove to these people that you can do it. Okay? Each personal trainer that she has on the show literally trains everybody differently. And it's really depending on their body type, depending on what they're dealing with. Because a lot of times emotions also affect your weight. And that's the truth. Um, a lot of times when you have dealt with emotional trauma or you've dealt with physical trauma in the past, it can cause your body to um, hold fat in and it causes you to just be stagnant when it comes to your weight. So that's why they say a lot of times, like some people lose weight when they're stressed and some people gain weight when they're stressed. So everybody's body is different. So they all have the same goal, correct? They all have the same goal to lose weight. They all want them to get healthy and lose the weight. But each personal trainer trains his client differently. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff. I'm like, dang, that worked out for you? That wouldn't have worked out for me because I know how I am. I'm not disciplined enough to do that. So they all get to the same goal. Then at the end of the show, they show up basically, and they all like transformed and all beautified. She even gets them a hairstylist. She gets them a makeup part, makeup artist, all these things basically. And by the end of the show, they come out and they come out with their final results of what they look like and um, how much better their life is because they lost all this weight and so on and so forth. I'm going to be real with y'all. When I see people, you know, post pictures of their Bibles and their reading time and their journaling time and all this stuff, a little piece inside of me gets a little jelly because I can't do that. In my head, I can't do that because I'm not committed enough to do that. And I have, I can make up so many excuses on why I don't think I'm committed enough to do that. And really, my excuses are not good enough, but you know, anti ways. So, what. Are the why are you struggling to be disciplined? Why are you struggling with your commitment? Why are you struggling, you know, receiving the knowledge that God has given you in order for you to be healthy in the spirit, in order for you to be healthy uh, in your life? Because when you are healthy in the spirit, that trickles down to your body. It shows out in the, in the, on the outside. If you ever talked, if you ever dealt with somebody that's been in the spirit realm and they're going hard in the paint and then afterwards they have this afterglow, it shows it on their body. It's like you see this afterglow of this person after being in the presence of God. It's like amazing. I don't know if you ever seen somebody like that, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's even when you see somebody in the middle of worship, like it's the most beautiful thing because you're seeing, you're seeing them in their nature. You're seeing them in this healthy place. You're seeing them, you know, where they belong. So it's, it's so beautiful. And then it shows on the outside. It's the same thing that it will transform you. I know God has always dealt with me about um, how my, you know, past traumas of, you know, doctors calling me obese and, you know, stuff that I dealt with as a child, being molested and all that stuff, that affected me in my weight. It affected me because my body found comfort in food and it wanted to hold on to all the things that it needed to hold on to so that way I can be comforted and be in my safe place. But that's not what God wants me wants for me. 
So he gave me the revelation that I needed to get healthy, not just for me, but for the nations that I have to go to and for my children, because my children have assignments as well. And they're watching me. And my husband also has assignments. And the dude, truthfully, he just eats whatever. Okay. And we're working on it. So please pray for me as we take on this journey of a healthier lifestyle. So basically, God said that in, just because something looks healthy doesn't mean it's actually good for you. Just because, you know, this salad looks good doesn't mean it's good for me. Reason being is because you, you can't just eat lettuce. Lettuce is water. That is just a little tiny piece of nutrition. You need more than that. You need tomatoes. You need carrots. You need, you know, avocados. Like, all this extra nutrition that would really fill you up and really give you the things that you need. And it's the healthy stuff. Not the supplement stuff because you can supplement stuff easily. Um, you can supplement yourself with, you know, the meatless stuff, which I don't know how people eat that. I'm still, ugh, it makes me cringe. But, you know, you can supplement yourself with the meat stuff, but that's not even what you need, though. That's not what your body is asking for. If your body is asking you for meat, that's what your body is asking you for. And it's sometimes, it's like I did this, uh, I read this article basically saying, like, if you crave this thing, that means your body needs blah, 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 blah. For example, if you're craving meat, your body needs iron. I don't know if these things are true. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nutritionist. So go do your research. I'm just saying disclaimer before y'all be coming after me and stuff. So just know that just because a salad looks healthy, just because it looks good, doesn't mean it's good for you. There's many more things that you need in order for this to be healthy. There's many things that you need in order to have a healthy relationship with God. Just because you are tithing, doesn't mean you have a healthy relationship with God. Don't supplement your guilt with tithing. That's not how it works. So it's the same thing. Don't try and supplement one thing with another thing and think that it's healthy. That's not how it works. Um, so in order to have a healthy relationship with God, you need all the things, all the ingredients. And you need to put them in a bowl. And then you need to mix it up and eat it all. And eat every little bit, little, you know, it'll be the pits of it. You know what I mean? I don't even know. I just stuttered like twice. So that's really all I got today. Um, I know that was like a handful of things and that was like a lot and I was probably all over the place. But um, I really could be worse. But because I made the commitment to really do th this um, program the way that God wants it and be organized and, you know, be, you know, do it as he guides me, I decided to start doing notes now. And the reason why is because it'll keep me uh, focused on what I'm talking about. Because I'm be very honest, I get very distracted easily. She's writing notes, y'all. Look, I'm writing notes. Okay, I've never done that. She's so, writing notes. That's my hubby in the background. I don't, can they hear you? They couldn't at first. They can now. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. I'm, so I'm I made so the proud commitment. Of you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. The notes. Could, you, see, this is why I'm proud of her, y'all. Because I'm always telling my wife, we need to make a list. And show them, the sh show, them, show them the face you make when I tell you to make a list. That's pretty much it. It sometimes it's a little not as nice as that. But I'm proud of you. Good job. Thank you, babe. So, I, like you said, I hate lists. I hate making a list. I, I just, it's something about it. It just makes me feel like I'm organizing my entire life and it frustrates me. But I am making the commitment to be more organized, to make better decisions. And in order for me to make those better decisions, I need to be focused. I have the knowledge that I have to be focused. I have the knowledge that I need to do these things. So in order to do these things, I have to make the commitment. So now I made the commitment. So now I have to remain disciplined and follow through and do this every single week and have my notes, unless God says otherwise, of course. But um, you see how these things can be implemented in your everyday life, and it could be implemented in literally everything that you do. So... Now, I need a, a partner to hold me accountable, and that's my husband, to keep me accountable over these things. Of course, he's always busy, so I don't know if he'll remember, but anyways. So, all this to say is, make sure that, and that you understand that in order to have a healthy relationship with God, you gotta have it all. All of it. Not just a piece of it, all of it. 
because you have the knowledge of what he wants to give you you have the knowledge of the promises that he has made you and in order for you to receive these promises you have to follow through in the areas that you need to follow through if he's giving you the promise that he's going to give you a car then you need to follow through and do what he told you to do before you get the car everybody has different instructions everybody was given an instruction if you notice god keeps makes a promise and he tells you the instruction next he says you know I'm going to give you this, but I need you to let go of this. I'm going to give you this, but I need you to do this. So all these things come together, and it helps, and it helps you have a healthier relationship with God. Um, if you want to look at if you need an example of what a healthy relationship with God looks like, look at Jesus, okay? Jesus was the man, okay? This dude went out. He just left the crew, and he went out on a mountain, and he started to pray. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you disciplined enough to do that? Are you committed enough to do that? Are you disciplined enough to let go of your schedule for today to go do what you need to do? So, yeah, that's all I have for today. I'm so excited. I'm always excited. So, now I feel like, um, I feel good now, okay? I'm not going to lie to you guys. I had a pretty iffy day yesterday. And now that I've done this, I feel good, okay? Because I allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and take over and do his thing. So, um, I want to share with you guys a message that you guys should listen to because it's absolutely amazing. If you don't know who Pastor Michael Todd is, then you need to go find out who Pastor Michael Todd is. His church is currently having a conference right now, which I really wanted to be a part of, but your girl just popped out a baby, so I couldn't be there. So, um... There are a few messages on, you can actually go listen to them on YouTube. Okay, okay. Dang, I really did a whole hour? Anyways, so um, his name is Pastor Michael Todd. The name of the church is Transformation Church. It's on YouTube. You can go look it up and look at all the faith messages that he has right now. I promise you it'll transform your life, it'll change your life, and it'll make you look at faith completely different. It has truly encouraged me in the season that I'm in, and um, I believe that it'll encourage you as well. Um, again, I just feel to iterate this um, to the people that want their family to be saved and are craving for their family to be saved. Understand that it's out of your control. But it's in God's hands because he's the one in control. And you just have to follow through and do the things that he's telling you to do because you are the example. You are the trailblazer that is going to cause things to change. So just stay committed. Don't let go. Don't walk away. Don't give up just because your family is not getting it. They, they, are, they belong to God at the end of the day. So he is the one that's going to take care of it. So I thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hey, LaShondra. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. So I will see you guys next week, um, and we will be here at 1 p.m. next week. Uh, I thank you guys so much for watching. I got to go because my child is crying. So I love you guys, and I will see you guys next week.